religious and intercultural dialogue organized by youth ambassadors of peace and supported by the National Commission on UNESCO.com. The interface being attended by Muslims and Christians is aiming to further strengthen the strong bonds between the peoples of the two faiths through discussions. We have more on this report by Ndebuso. The conference is designed to explore cross cutting issues that bind people living for pluralistic societies and common concerns and also look into issues that often spark frictions with people of other faiths and culture and how to avoid them. Every human society has its own particular culture or socio-cultural arrangements. Variation among culture is resources, the range of possibilities inherent in areas such as language, ritual and social organizations. And something that you are living with, you should be able to discuss with people about it. And I think we'll be open to each other and discuss and map our strategies of how do we maintain the peace that we are enjoying in the country as a resource of our intercultural and our interreligious uh, coexistence in the, in, the, in, the, in the country. Dramin M. Sanyan, the president of the Youth Ambassadors of Peace, said of recent religious extremism has contributed to conflict escalation, taking radical measures as necessary tools to fulfilling God's wishes adding that for a small and peaceful country like the Gambia, there is need to bring religious leaders together to dialogue and so as to maintain the peace and stability the country ever enjoys. If any ambiguity needs to be removed, we need to come to terms with ourselves. In our increasingly pluralistic societies, more interreligious dialogue and cooperation need if conflict failed by religion is to be constructively addressed. We need new ways to understand particularity universality and plurality, we must learn to live our feet with integrity while respecting and expecting each other. The United Nations General Assembly has proclaimed 2010 as International Year for the Rapprochement of Culture and designated UNESCO as lead agency. UNESCO firmly intends to show that cultures can pass not only art and literature, but also lifestyle, value, system, traditions and beliefs. As we are living in a world that is increasingly marked by growing interdependence in all areas of human activity, the resultant cross-fertilization of our societies offers new opportunities to strengthen the ties between peoples, nations, and cultures at the global level. At the same time with globalization, incomprehension and mistrust have increased in the last few years. The economic, environmental, and ethical crisis has further increased this sense of insecurity and mistrust. Since many countries around the world, including the Gambia, are becoming increasingly multicultural and living together peacefully in a such multicultural context, in some cases, remains elusive. The young peace advocates are now engaging leaders and communities to reflect on issues of intercultural and interreligious dialogue and propose actions to be taken locally and globally. For GRTS News, I am Debusu. An Egypt-based organization called Daru Tauze Wanasser and the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council have partnered to stage what is said to be the first book fair in the country dedicated solely to Islamic literature. The exhibition at the Khalid bin Walid Center in Lachikonda, as Abu Bakr Daba reports, is among a range of efforts to make reading and research material readily available to the country's teeming mass of young people at affordable prices. First time in history, the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council is collaborating with this Egypt-based organization called Dadu Tawzeh Wad Nasser to exhibit 40,000 books and resource materials, something that is partially a fulfillment of the Council's long-term dream of making Islamic reading and research accessible and affordable. The books are intellectual and academic resources touching on numerous disciplines like Islamic religion, jurisprudence, science and literature, with some of them written in French and English. The week-long event is aimed at accessing books to the country's reading and research and population at cheaper rates. We have all sorts of books here, and uh, also the price has been reduced because of the you know, government intervention. So we are hoping that st most of the students will benefit from this uh, exhibition. It's a very historic one. We, we, we think that uh, uh, it will be you know, very, very, very good one for them, inshallah. Is there any hope that it will continue? Yes, this is what we are uh, planning. Uh, they, they promise that uh, they will continue with us. They are even thinking of uh, having a, a library here that will enable students to access to the books. 
At a such ceremony before the official launch of the exhibition, the President of the Supreme Islamic Council, Al Haji Muhammad Lamin Touré, explained that it has been the desire of his council since inception to initiate such exhibitions and commend the partnership between the council and the Cairo based organization for the exhibition. The continuation of such exercises, according to Touré, will greatly help save Gambians who travel to neighboring countries in search of intellectual resources. Efforts of Gambia in Mauritania have significantly contributed to the day's exhibition, but one man Toure could not miss out is the government president who personally intervened to ensure that the books are made reasonable to buyers. Omar Kureish, who spoke on behalf of the educational institutions in the country, dilated on the significance of knowledge in bettering lives both here and in the hereafter, adding that the exhibition must be sustained to make its benefit far-reaching. He also appealed for the establishment of a library that will quench the desire of researchers and scholars in the country. Hamdi Hassan heads the exhibition team, and according to him, they have displayed about 40,000 books on different topics, all geared towards disseminating Islamic knowledge in the country. He expressed satisfaction with the religious majority of Gambians, saying that they will render their service in the best interest of the Gambian populace. Imam Abdullah Fatih, for his part, thanked Darut Tawzi'u Nasr for providing Gambians the opportunity to access such valuable books at reasonable cost, adding that government has been doing its bit to ensure that anything relating to the welfare of Muslims is well considered. He appealed for more of such exhibitions in the country. The short ceremony was strapped up with a conducted tour of the exhibition center by scholars, imams, and prospective researchers and students. Abu Bakr Dabo, GRTS. The patriotic ward at the Royal Victoria Teaching Hospital recently benefited from a, from a donation of foodstuff, toys, and other items. The donor organization seeks to, among other things, empower small-scale female entrepreneurs. Fatou Jassi reports. Exactly six months since its inception, Club 4 is an organization of Gambian businesswomen engaged in different businesses. Its aim is to empower and support women engaging in small-scale businesses. Today's presentation of food items, toys and insecticide sprays to the RVTH pediatric ward is the club's first ever show of support to a public institution. We feel that it's befitting for us mm -hmm. that we take the venture of starting with the children's wing. As this is our first one, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. we started in July. Mm -hmm. 2011 mm -hmm. so barely we are just six months old yes. and we can do such a nation mm -hmm. so if we have the support of the gambian nation mm -hmm. we can do more the sky is the limit right. forming a critical component of the main referral hospital according to club four they are complementing efforts of the first lady and her operation safe a baby in providing standard health care service for children mataja a member of the group said they yearn for a better collaboration with the country's main referral hospital the vice president of the association, Day Awakan Sise, says Club Fua does not only stop at empowering grassroots women business entrepreneurs, but also striving to establish cross-border trade between business women in the Gambia and other countries. Chan Kan Sise, also a member of the club, believes the initiative is one that bodes well for them, since they are helping their fellow women who are mothers. Upon receiving the items, the matron at the pediatric ward at the Royal Victoria Teaching Hospital held the donors for donations saying it will assist them a lot in their service delivery system. The Victoria Teaching Hospital is the main referral hospital in this country. And hospital, uh, sorry, the uh, government alone cannot do. We need the support of uh, other organizations and individuals like you. This uh, handsome donation you brought to this hospital will definitely have an impact in the service delivery of this department because these are handsome footballs, sweets, you know, they will help us, help us to persuade the children to stay longer. As some of them are pressing their mothers to go home, but once these handsome things are given to them, you know, we can persuade them to stay more for them to complete their course of treatment. This presentation is expected to give birth to a better collaboration between the RVTH and the women group. And according to association members, they will continue to render support to the country's main referral hospital in the long run. For GRTS News, I am Fatou Jassi. You can also follow that story and other GRTS programs live on our website, which is at grts.gm. There you can also monitor GRTS. Radio Lava will go with our first break. Now we'll be right back. <laughs> 